Bismillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our next guest needs no introduction, but if we do an introduction, it will just be for formality. Today, I'm privileged to host Sheikh Bilal Phillips, and this is Know Your Sheikh. As we always say, there's no place like this place, anywhere near this place. So, bi'idnillah, this must be the place. Karibu sana, Sheikh. Welcome to Kenya. Thank you for welcoming me to, <coughs> to Kenya, welcoming me back to Kenya as I've been here before. Alhamdulillah, it's my pleasure to be back. Thank you. Uh, Nam Sheikh, we, what I want to, the next thing I want to ask, and, and I'm really invested and interested in this question because um, I've been a Muslim, I reverted around 10, 10, 10 years ago. My mother has not yet uh, accepted Islam. Mm -hmm. And I, from your lectures, I've heard you say your mother expected, ex accepted Islam after 21 years? Yes, that's correct. Mother and father. Mother and father. Both of them at the same time? Yes. Allahu Akbar. Mm -hmm. Could you take us through, walk us through what happened those 21 years, doing da'wah to them, maybe talking to them, being a good son to them? Talk, take us through that in, in a nutshell. Well, actually, the story is a long story. Uh, you know? Let's and make it brief in there. Okay. Yeah, I would try to do that. Mm -hmm. um, let's say that both of my parents were positive about Islam. Okay. They didn't have a negative view. Mm -hmm. They had studied about it when they were studying in university in Canada uh, in uh, what is called... Uh, comparative religions or world religions, they called it world religions, mm -hmm. where they looked at various different religions, the, the pluses and minuses, etc., regarding them. And as I mentioned earlier, my parents had adopted an Indonesian boy yeah. who they adopted in order to give him a chance to study after uh, high school because in Malaysia they were in Malaysia I was there with them uh, Indonesians who were in the Malaysian uh, states were not given the opportunities to, to study higher education university level education they mm -hmm. would, could study freely up to high school, to high school yeah. but then from university they had to pay Mm -hmm. Whereas Malaysians or Malays mm -hmm. were free, they didn't have to pay. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the point is that they wanted to give him that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And while they were studying world religions, they did learn about Islam and its teachings and things like this. And they felt it was something good. Mm -hmm. They were positive about it. Uh, but not necessarily as something they would choose to change their life style, practices, etc., and become. But uh, in time, mm -hmm. uh, due to the difference between the way I treated them and the way my other brothers and sisters treated them, uh, it, was, it had become very common in Canada to blame your parents for everything that goes wrong in your life, mm -hmm. you know? very common. Mm -hmm. Parents were being abused mm -hmm. by their children mm -hmm. in Canada and continue to be abused mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. Whereas I treated them kindly, gently, and uh, tried to support them, look after them, as Islam teaches us this is after to take you, care you of them. That's Muslim after now. becoming Muslim. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, even before that, I mean, I, I didn't have any of that. Mm -hmm. I didn't carry that, uh, any kind of, you know, displeasure and mm -hmm. dislike. Uh, or disrespect. Disrespect to them. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Okay. You know. Okay. So this really softened them towards Islam. In, in ge to that further, you could say, is further supported their view of Islam being, you know, a good religion. Mm -hmm. And um, I tried many different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it was to give them books mm -hmm. or to show them DVDs in those days uh, or to try to discuss certain points with them, etc. And they, 
they had no problem in that sense discussing things and they were quite frank. Um, I even wrote a book called The True Religion of God. Mm -hmm. Which they, they read. They both read it. Mashallah. Uh, but in particular, they read it after I had given it as a lecture. It was transcribed and I edited it and it was printed as a booklet and distributed from the Batha Dawa Center in Riyadh. And it was one of the first booklets that were dis distributed in English for Dawa, translated also into other languages. But um, after I, it was circulating for about two or three years, I decided to revise it because it was taken from an oral delivery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, you know, one a book which is specifically written as a book mm -hmm. is, is is better presentable, is more presentable. Mm -hmm. Uh, than a book which just comes from what you say, mm -hmm. you know, because as you're speaking, you're you're not planning and yeah, you know yeah, speaking. Yeah. Uh, uh, you understand I can the understand, difference yeah. between. Yes. So I decided to revise that booklet, mm -hmm. and um, after I finished revising it, then I gave it to both my parents, and I asked them to check it over. Uh, for you know mm, grammatical for, mistakes uh, and yeah. mistakes in logic, mm, things like which are, they are yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. if it was illogical, mm -hmm. if they, even in my presentation of my ideas, why basically I'm saying Islam is the true religion, mm -hmm. right? So they went through it and they made some corrections in spellings and, and other things, uh, some logical things, and uh, I went over it and I made all the changes made uh, corrections in spellings. Did they make corrections in your arguments about the truth? No, that's what I'm saying. Ah, okay. they, 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 basically, they didn't, mm -hmm. but there were maybe some points that they clarified ah, okay. uh, that, that a, a, a non-Muslim reading it might not understand ah, okay, what okay. was intended. Okay. So they made some like those. Mm -hmm. It's really more clarification. Mm -hmm. So but the point is that when they finished it, you know, and, uh, and uh, I went over and made all the changes. They looked it over again. Yeah, it's fine. It's good. So I said, okay, if it's good, why don't you become Muslims? Right? Because I've put all the arguments there. You know, you went through it. This was my uh, way I understand. to try yeah, to, yeah, yeah. you know, this was just another attempt. Uh -huh. And um, <laughs> They said, they, they smiled, they, they, they find also themselves, they laughed and they said, okay, give us a Quran. Mm -hmm. So they took the Quran from me. Mm -hmm. So I felt, okay, you know, I tried to get the message through that way. Um, uh, and at one point, they moved down to Jeddah and I went down to Jeddah to see them. And um, they worked for a publishing company, uh, doing some editing for them. And, um, and teaching English to uh, high university students. And um, the owner of the company, he had invited Ahmed Didat mm. to come mm -hmm. to uh, Saudi Arabia. And he took him on a tour around the different cities. Mm -hmm. Now, Ahmed Didat, when he, um, he came with uh, the head of the uh, institute and English Institute, etc., which had Your my parents working. were working with, yeah. mm. um, we had dinner together, right? And uh, Ahmed Didat was introduced to them, my parents, and he understood I was a Muslim, but but that they were Christians, right? So as soon as he found out they were Christians, then he, he launched a series of bombs, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on them, you know, in the uh, Bible, this, that, and the uh, other, blah, 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 blah. In, in uh, classical Ahmadidat fashion. Style, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So actually that turned off my parents. Oh. Yeah, turned off my parents. Because the assumptions that he had made mm -hmm. were not correct. Mm -hmm. 
he assumed that they were like the, uh, the most Christians who are mm -hmm. negative towards Islam, mm -hmm. but they were positive. Mm -hmm. So accusing them of these things, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is the lesson from that really is that before you talk to somebody, mm -hmm. you need to know what they are thinking. Mm, yeah, you have to listen first. Yeah, that's why it's even better. One of the best ways for dawah to to non-Muslim neighbors, friends, and so on, so is to ask them. Okay, listen. Mm. You know, I've known you for the last twenty years, twenty-five years. We're neighbors to that. You know, I'm a Muslim. Yeah, and I know you're a Christian. What do you know about Islam? Or what do you think about Islam? Let them tell you. Sheikh, in the interest of time, just in two words, the instance your parents took Shahada, how did you feel? Of course, it was, I was elated. You know, it was after 21 years of dawah, trying this way, that way, the other way, you know, and uh, they were never no, uh, but they will think about it. That's the hardest. Yes. We'll, so, think, we'll think about it. At their own accord, they just yeah. did it at their own accord. They, they came because, I, I did ask my mother why. My father explained simply, he said, well, when I was 13 years old, I studied in, in high school, I studied logic in, back in Jamaica. They used to teach logic to high school kids. So he studied, he studied logic. Now his father was a priest in the church. He had his own church. Mm -hmm. So my father was exposed to those ideas, the ideas of Jesus is the son of God and you know the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit, three gods in one and all this, right? So he said, once I learned logic and I thought about it, I felt, I concluded that Jesus could not have been God. It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. So he stopped believing in God as Jesus mm -hmm. from the time he was in his early teens. So he was a muahid, you know, one who believed in only one God. So you see, Ahmed did that statement for him would have been totally out of place. Mm. And my mother, in her case, she explained that you know, she wasn't a hardcore Christian, you know, she was flexible. But what would win her over to Islam was when I came down to Jidda to visit them, she mentioned to me, do you notice anything in the house? I said, no, I didn't notice anything. But she said, I keep seeing things move here and there, just flashes, like, you know, darkness. And so she said, I feel there's something evil in the house. You know, so I, I said, oh, she showed me she had made a cross out of thread, this uh, crocheting. She crocheted a cross and put it over the, the door, over the bedroom door, over the living room door, so on, so on. But it didn't have any impact, you know. It, it was, she still was feeling that. So I said, well, you know, uh, in Islam, the Prophet sure, told sure. us to read the Quran, specifically Surah Al-Baqarah, mm. you know, and it will drive away the satanic influences, you know, for three days and nights. So I'll just go and do that. So she said, okay, please. So I went and I read it. It didn't do anything immediately, but I, I had to travel. I got on the plane and went back up to Riyadh. And then I forgot about it. She said, you know, after you left, it went. So she said, this is clear evidence that what Islam has is superior to what I have had. Definitely. That was enough to convince her. And she had studied about Islam in, in university. You know, she even knew more so than my father knew. You know? So they decided... Uh, at the point when I completed my, my PhD, I came to visit them in Canada. And my mom came to me in the night and said, listen, I want to accept Islam. Allah but I don't want you to tell your father that I did. Let him choose for himself. The next morning, my father came to me 
and said, I want to accept it. So, at what's the earliest point in your years? What, how old were you when you first interacted with uh, Islam? Well, the first interaction with Muslims, yes, we, can, we wouldn't say really with Islam, but with Muslims, uh, came when I was in my teens uh, in Malaysia. My family had moved to Malaysia, and the, there was Islam present in the society, but it wasn't really visible, mm -hmm. you know, due to uh, colonization of that area by the British and pushing Islam mm -hmm. away from the main uh, the cities, the mosques could only be built outside the, param the, the, the parameters of the city, mm -hmm. Saba, mm -hmm. the capital. So, but uh, uh, you open the door, <laughs> you know. Uh, my family did adopt mm -hmm. a Muslim boy oh, who grew up with us, myself, my brother and sister, so, a, so in, Malaysia. in Malaysia. So this is contact with a Muslim. Okay. There's a difference between, you know, contact with Islam mm -hmm. and contact with the Muslim. Yes. So he was a Muslim who grew up along with us. Um, my mother used to look out for his Islam uh, by preparing suhoor for him. Okay. She would get up early in the morning, though she was Christian. She would prepare suhoor for him. Um, when she was cooking meals and we were eating pork, she would cook fish for him, you know, like this. So they, they, my mother and father did look after his, his Islam in the sense of not doing or requiring him to do anything which would go against the teachings of Islam. They were aware of what Islam was. So, so Sheikh, in your, in, your, in your story, in your biography, it mentions you moved from Christianity to communism to Islam. I know that's a long story. But what is it that touched you so much, maybe, to, about Islam that made you maybe start having those thoughts of becoming a Muslim and, and eventually to revert to Islam? Well, as you mentioned, you know, I, I, when I went to university in British Columbia in the West Coast, Canada, uh, I got into a circle of uh, of um, teachers and students on campus who were involved in uh, opposition to the Vietnam War, right? Canada was building the napalm bombs which were being used by America to drop on the Vietnamese people. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of campus unrest. Mm -hmm. And um, those in the forefront of it were were, had become communists themselves. The same war that Muhammad Ali refused to go. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So at that, so at that, at that time, I uh, had no. I was raised a Christian, but a nominal Christian. Mm -hmm. I went to church, but I really had no idea of the theology, and that. so I became drawn in to the communist. Uh, thought of those who were activists of the time, you know, and presenting communism as the solution for mankind's problems. So uh, the presentation that was given, Marxist-Leninism, was attractive. Mm -hmm. It had a lot of promise and, and seemed to be calling for the right thing, you know, equality of people. And I was also conscious of the racism that existed in the U.S., uh, in Canada also, but on a very small scale in relationship to the U.S. So, uh, and the history of what happened, you know, slavery and, uh, and subjugation of, of black people from Africa, etc. So, communism spoke against these things and that the communist society that they were seeking to build would be free from these evils. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they presented a solution, mm -hmm. you know, based on their... Uh, vision and understanding of the goal of human life that as human beings uh, you should work according to your ability but you should only take back according to your need oh. this so, so you, you are joining of this uh, all of this was you wanted to bring change to the world yes okay very much so, so so just in the interest of time how or where did islam maybe come in or how did you interact with islam well, basically, I had to go through 
the communist route mm -hmm. and, and see for myself that communism was a failure. Ah, okay. When I saw it as a failure, mm -hmm. it wasn't able to compete with the West, the capitalist West. Mm -hmm. Economically, it couldn't compete with it. Okay. Then I said, there's got to be something wrong with this. This is not, uh, uh, this is not going to solve the, mm -hmm. the so situation of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's at that point I was now willing to look elsewhere. I mean, I, I, I looked other, elsewhere from, from, uh, from Christianity mm -hmm. because it was just nominal. Mm -hmm. I was a Christian officially on the outside, but what, if you ask me then what is really a Christian, I couldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. I'd never read the Bible or anything like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, similarly, from communism, I, I left when it was no longer relevant, it seemed to be no longer relevant, and there had to be some other way, some other system that had the solution for humankind's uh, needs and, and, pro and solving their problems, etc. So the point is that uh, I was involved at that time with political movements, which were pan-African type movements, etc. And um, uh, I was also influenced by American draft dodgers who had fled from the U.S. and were up in Canada at the time. Mm -hmm. So some of them had come up, they had become Muslims in America and had come up to Canada. And uh, they were joining our rallies and, and meetings and things like this. And they would try to put in little bits of Islam here and there, you know. And uh, I could hear it, you know. And they mentioned some points which sounded good. And it led me to go to America and try to see, see if I could find Islam there. Mm -hmm. Because there were mosques in, in America at that time. This is, you know, back in this, the, the, the late 70s, the early 70s. Mm -hmm. So... Um, uh, when I went there, I went to the, what they call the black Muslims, Elijah Muhammad's Nation of Islam. Nation of Islam. Yes. Uh, and initially, I was impressed. The males, you know, seemed to be very cleanly dressed and tidy. And, and, and yes, and, 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 and the and women were all wearing, you know, hijab and, and this X, type X, of thing. X, Malcolm X is well, yeah, that came as an issue afterwards, but I mean, it wasn't initially uh, important to me, but was just the organization and, and um, almost military, mm. you know, they were, meaning they were ready to defend if needed, and they were, you know, following the commands. Yeah. So it was attractive, but when I listened to their theology, their theology, which was teaching what was, to me was just what we call reverse racism, mm -hmm. uh, right? The whites were saying blacks were inferior, mm -hmm. and, and Elijah Muhammad and his organization were saying that blacks were gods, mm -hmm. and that whites were made by a black scientist who went to the moon and created white people there. <laughs> you know, so to me that was just total nonsense uh, because I, I grew up in, in, in Canada and uh, some of my friends were white people and you know I, so I just couldn't accept that so I, I left it behind but then um, a good friend of mine who was in the political movement Pan-Africanist movement had converted to Islam when I got back to Canada and um, that caused me to say okay let me have a look at that. Though, as a communist, you know, we are taught that uh, religion is the opium of the masses. Yeah. You know, so uh, there was like, religion was a no-no, you know, it was useless. It's only to drug people so that you can exploit them. But anyway, this person who was uh, a member of the party, in the organization I was with, converted to Islam, and that caused me to say, okay, let me, give me a few books. Start so reading about it. I start to read. Yeah. So in the interest of time, I think we have only three minutes. There's a question that um, I'm, I'm, I want to, to ask you is: many Muslims who revert, who have reverted, or many, any, many people who revert to Islam have that um, like mentality of second-class Muslims. They look at uh, majority. So how do you revert 
and then become the person, alhamdulillah, you are now, write so many books, you know, found um, so many of start, so many organizations, university like uh, IOU. Why and how? Well, that's a whole episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? brief, in brief. But uh, also, also what I want to, uh, the, the young people to, to learn is, you know, you can be a rivet and also you can start something. You don't have to be call yourself rivet after 20 years, after mm -hmm. 50 years. You don't have to be the person waiting for, you know, for eight. Like now in Ramadan, you have, you have be the list of zakat, zakat will fit. You also can learn and teach other people. So just mm -hmm. in a nutshell. Well, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. I mean, what I would say is that uh, what made me decide that Islam mm -hmm. was correct mm -hmm. was a book by Muhammad Qutb mm -hmm. called uh, Islam, the Misunderstood Religion. In Arabic, it, it's called Shubhat Hawl al-Islam. So in that book, the author, Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad Qutb, had compared communism capitalism, uh, Christianity, Buddhism, various isms, and Islam, comparing each other according to their effectiveness and ineffectiveness. What was right about them and what was wrong about them. Mm -hmm. So what I found after reading about them as a whole, these different systems, was that whatever was good in them, and they all had some good, because people are not going to follow it if it is no good. Whatever was good in them was found in Islam, existed in Islam. But whatever was bad in them was not found in Islam. So it seemed Islam gathered together all of the good which you know is found in all of these other systems is there in Islam. And left the bad in, in, in the others. Mashallah. Yes. So that's, that's what convinced me that it has to be Islam. That is the way forward. Because if it has that kind of a you know, balance between good and bad, uh, with no bad virtually, uh, and only good, then it has to be superior. So that's what convinced me, uh, as well as a, another book by Maududi, Maulana Maududi, who wrote on the, the topic of uh, Towards Understanding Islam. Sheikh, as we conclude, say this is your latest published book, which means you have others that are not published, the best in Islam. Sheikh, you, you, you are, how old are you now? I'm 76. 76. You know, you, I think you were born uh, five days after me, but 50 years before. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sheikh, um, you still have the hunger, the drive to write to write this book since you wh when did you write your first book 1980 1980 so many people so many muslims and non-muslims have that hunger to do something but they don't get to do it in a nutshell what drives you what makes you like write write the book open the university or the institution what drives you well, basically, I understood from the time I became a Muslim mm -hmm. that I had the responsibility of sharing Islam mm -hmm. with those around me. Mm -hmm. That's why I tried to make da'wah to my parents, to mm -hmm. encourage them, mm -hmm. my friends, mm -hmm. former friends, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoever I would meet, mm -hmm. I would, want, in one way or another, try to get the message of Islam across to them if mm -hmm. the opportunity presented itself. Mm -hmm. So that was the ultimate drive. And the Prophet Muhammad had said, Bellihu anni ayah. Convey whatever you learned from me, even if it's only a single verse of the Quran. Mm -hmm. Then when I went to study in Medina, mm -hmm. because within a year after I had accepted Islam, I went to Medina to study Islam. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that those who were around me at that time in mm -hmm. Canada, 1972, people, those people had no real understanding of what Islam was. They were cultural Muslims. They were just following the culture and did whatever was said and done by the people of their place. Mm -hmm. So what happened is that each one had a different opinion. And when I tried to find out some fiqh issues from them, and I asked 
uh, some uh, brothers from Shafi Fiqh who were from Egypt, right? I asked them uh, about a man accidentally touching a woman. And they said that his wudu is broken. And her wudu is also broken. Ablution, she had, they had to redo ablution or wudu again. But then when I asked some Pakistani brothers, they said, if that happens, your wudu is intact. It's okay, no problem. And they had told me before when I first became Muslim and I was moving around with Muslims, I went to Jamaat Tabligh and sat with some of their sheikhs and so on and so. They had told me, listen, you know, Islam has four madhabs. All of them are correct. But you must follow one. I asked them at the time, well, which one do you suggest that I should follow? I said, well, you know, most Muslims are Hanafis. From India, Pakistan, you know, you're talking how many millions and millions plus. So I said, okay, yeah, if most Muslims are Hanafis, I'll become a Hanafi. And I tried to get as much knowledge as I could, but then, as I said, as I was asking, I found this difference. Because this difference was asking me to believe that you could have wudu and not have wudu at the same time. Because as a Shafi, you had no wudu. Mm -hmm. As a Hanafi, you had, had wudu. wudu. Mm -hmm. So I said, this can't be right. There's something wrong here. So I need to get to the sources of Islam in order to get that knowledge and understand the religion better. So that's why I applied to go and study in Medina and studied there for over 20 years. And um, alhamdulillah, this led me to want to explain in writing for other convert Muslims, people coming into Islam who didn't know Arabic, etc., you know, the, the principles of Islam, you know, in a language they could understand. So that's what led me. And you see, if you look at the books that I've written, I've written over 50 books, you know, individual books and individual topics, and did another 56 books for children series etc so and i'm still writing i'm working currently on the 99 names of allah in depth uh, understanding for people who don't know arabic uh, so this was all driving me to explain islam in arabic from arabic to english to the english audience because i had gone and studied arabic and i gained that knowledge it was my duty uh, to convey it. As the Prophet ﷺ had said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمُ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَتْ Best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it to others. Sheikh, so, three, things, um, three things or three words that define you. Just three words. Like let's say uh, perseverance, focus. And what are three things that maybe a young person watching can learn from you that would help a young, another young person to achieve even half of what you have achieved well three words with Allah's will mm -hmm. you know they can achieve a hundred times mm -hmm. what yeah. I achieved mm -hmm. you know with the help of Allah uh -huh. but uh, I could say one getting knowledge getting knowledge correct and authentic knowledge mm -hmm. two sharing that knowledge mm -hmm. with others around me as a daily and a norm for myself mm -hmm. and then conveying that knowledge in a structured format and that becomes university schools etc you know which are the best institutions for conveying the knowledge uh, on a grand scale as opposed to individual scale Along with that, patience. Patience. Having patience as difficulties are going to arise. <coughs> difficulties will arise when one is engaged in trying to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. So you have to be patient. People will misunderstand you. Um, look for those 
who can help you. Be patient with their mistakes as you expect them to be patient with yours. Barakallahu fiqh. Jazakallahu khairan, Sheikh. May Allah preserve you. May Allah give you more wisdom, more energy to continue serving Allah and also helping us and guiding us through your knowledge or whatever you've been able to, 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 to learn. Barakallahu fiqh. And Allah enjoy your stay. You. Enjoy your stay in Kenya. Amen. This is Know Your Sheikh. And today, like I said, our guest needed no introduction, but we have learned a lot from him. Know your sheikh, as we say at Ilm TV, there is no place like this place anywhere near this place. So, Idnila, this must be the place. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.